friends, this video on mechanical properties of fluids part 29 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 28 before going ahead with part 29. Introduce another important term or another important concept known as Reynolds number. So what is a Reynolds number and what is the significance of Reynolds number? Let us learn about that. Reynolds number is a dimensionless number whose value gives an idea whether the flow would be turbulent or laminar. So now you understand the significance of Reynolds number. We studied long back that broadly the types of fluid flow is classified into two types. One is laminar flow or the steady flow and the other one is the turbulent flow. So how do we know just from data that whether a flow is a laminar flow or a turbulent flow because the way both the flows are defined is something like you need to observe the motion of the particle, right? But if you consider in our real life, if something is, if a fluid is flowing, you are not able to visualize the flow of each of the particles always, right? So there has to be some mechanism or there has to be something with the help of which we can directly say that, okay, if this is this condition is true, then the flow is laminar. If this condition is false, the flow is turbulent. So, Reynolds number gave us an approach like that. It is basically a number. The number itself will denote whether the flow is laminar or the flow is turbulent. It is generally denoted by RE. The subscript E shows RE. With the E, it shows Reynolds. The expression for Reynolds number is Re is equal to rho into V into D divided by eta. Here, rho is the density of the fluid. V is the velocity of the fluid. D is the diameter of the pipe through which the fluid flows. And eta is the viscosity of the fluid. Now, if we know all these values, we can calculate the value of Reynolds number and we can find whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. If you see, all these four values are something which you will be knowing. Let us suppose if I tell you there is a fluid, say, let us call oil. Oil is flowing through a tube. Now, the tube is something which we can visualize. So, we will know the diameter of the tube, quite obviously or we can measure the diameter of the tube. We know that oil is flowing through the tube. So oil is something whose density will be known to us. Oil is something whose viscosity will be known to us. And since we see that the oil is flowing through the tube, we should also know with, which, with what velocity oil is flowing through the tube. So once we know all these four quantities, we can calculate the value of Reynolds number. And we can directly say whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. So how does Reynolds number distinguish between laminar and turbulent flow? It says that if the value of the Reynolds number reaches 1000, till its value is 1000, the flow is laminar. And once the value of Reynolds number is greater than 2000, the flow is turbulent. That means laminar flow is denoted by less than 1000 and turbulent flow is denoted by greater than 2000. If the value of Reynolds number is greater than 2000, it is turbulent. If the value is less than 1000, it is laminar. So what if the value lies between 1000 and 2000? In that case, the flow is unstable. That means it is the flow is in an intermediate state. The flow has some characteristics of laminar flow. It has some characteristics of turbulent flow. So we cannot classify the flow as either of them and we say that the flow is unstable. Okay, so I don't think there is 
much complication in understanding Reynolds number. It was very simple and straightforward. Now we will try to derive another expression or an alternative expression for Reynolds number. So this expression of Reynolds number will be in terms of the inertial force and the force of viscosity. Because we already, however, we have already expressed Reynolds number in terms of velocity, coefficient of viscosity and the diameter of the tube. But now we will derive another expression in terms of inertial force and the force of viscosity. Now we have already expressed or we already know that the expression for Reynolds number is rho into v into d divided by eta. As I have already told you what is rho, v, d and eta, I am not writing it again. So let us concentrate on the derivation. So in this we will derive that Reynolds number is equal to inertial force divided by the force of viscosity. So let us multiply both the numerator and denominator by v. So multiply numerator and denominator by d. So what do you get? You get Re is equal to rho v d square. I'm sorry. We multiply numerator and denominator by v. That is velocity. So you get rho v square d divided by eta v. So this we can write it as rho into v square divided by eta into v by d. We, have, we did nothing, just we rearranged the terms. So we can write it in this form. Now, now let us again multiply both the numerator and denominator by capital A. That what is A? A is nothing but area. So what do we get? We get Re is equal to rho into v square into A divided by eta into v divided by d into A. So now what we will do, we will see, since we had to prove that Re is equal to inertial force by force of viscosity. Now we will prove that the numerator here, this is nothing but the inertial force and the denominator which we have here is nothing but the force of viscosity. So that is what we will prove now. So now let us see what is inertial force. So when I say inertial force, what is inertial force? The force which we talked about when we talked of Newton's laws, that is force is equal to mass into acceleration. That is the force by virtue of inertia. So now what is mass? Mass, mass is nothing but density into volume because we know that density is equal to mass into volume. And what is acceleration? Acceleration is nothing but change in velocity with time. So let us denote velocity by V and time by T and volume by capital V. So this we can write it as rho into velocity into what is volume? As we already discussed, volume is area into displacement. So we can write volume as area into displacement. And what will be displacement? Let us write it as displacement. Volume is area into displacement divided by time. So this we can write as rho into v into a into displacement by time taken. What is displacement by time taken? Displacement covered by time taken is nothing but velocity. So we can write it as rho v square a. So what is inertial force? Inertial force is rho v square a which is this numerator. So we have proved that the numerator is inertial force. Now let us look at the denominator. Let us utilize the space. So let us talk about force of viscosity. So what would be the force of viscosity? When I talk of force of viscosity, the coefficient of viscosity has to come into hold. We know that coefficient of viscosity that is eta is equal to stress that is shearing stress divided by shearing strain rate. 
Now, what is shearing stress? It is force per unit area. And what is shearing strain rate? Strain rate is displacement per unit length. Displacement per unit original length per unit time, that is T. So, this we can write it as force per unit area divided by what is displacement per unit time, that is velocity. So, we can write it as V by L. So, this becomes F into L divided by A into V. So, what is this? This is eta is equal to F into L divided by A into V. Therefore, what is the force of viscosity? This F denotes the force due to viscosity. So, we can say that F is equal to eta A V divided by L. So, what is this? This is nothing but eta into V divided by L. What is this L? L represents nothing but the dimension of the tube through which the fluid is flowing. And in this case, in this definition, what was D? D was nothing but the diameter of the pipe through which it was flowing. So, what, whatever L denotes here is what D denotes here. It is just that both are denoted by different alphabets. So, here we get eta into V divided by L into A. So basically this is same as this denominator. So we proved that Reynolds number is can be expressed as the ratio of inertial force to the force of viscosity. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.